I was already amazed last year to hear you on the live stream, uh, but it's no comparison to have you live in person, live music, that's just great. So our next guest is... Ramona, and uh, she is a very special guest today. She is, but to tell some background, she is a developer, she has also a um, QA background. And um, she actually, you see the talk is about Cypress. I don't know if any of you have used Cypress already. Uh, I really like it. And um, she's a Cypress ambassador. She works at Shopware. And yes. today is a very special day for her because... because it's her birthday. So, so. please, a very a warm very welcome <laughs> for Ramona. Hello, you there, and thank you so much for this warm welcome. It's not only my birthday today, it's really special to be here at an in-person conference, which I have, been not, I have not been like ages. Maybe you know that as well because of COVID and stuff. So it's really important for me, and it's really precious that you are sharing your time with me here and listening to me sharing my end-to-end -end journey, how it got to a good end. And if you help me, Pray with the live demo gods. We will have a little live demo, live coding. So please wish me luck that the fate is on my side just because I have birthday. And let's check out if NEOS takes care of testability. Let's see. Well, let's introduce the talk in other words. I'm Ramona, and welcome to the premiere episode of Mo Presents from the Test. Mo is a little nickname just to say that. But jokes aside, let's get serious. As I said, I am a front-end developer at Shopware, and Shopware is a com company providing an open-source e-commerce system. So slightly, I have um, a little bit of experience when it comes to news because I think they have an enterprise, but just quite yeah, superficial. So I'm really, really excited to see how they are with test automation. And as I have some experience when it comes to QA. You can really guess that I'm really passionate about test automation. But what does test automation mean for me? Well, I think you should always write a test, no matter what test, because it will take care that your written code works, that your assumption on your code is the right one, and you don't have some false misconceptions or whatever. And on top of that, a test will take care that no other developer, may it be a colleague or a contributor or whoever basically, destroys their functionality or your functionality, your code with theirs. If you got many tests, for me, that means having a good coverage. And this means, in my opinion, that you can be confident when it comes to deploying stable software without much need of automated or basic, oh, that was a bit pun, but when it comes to additional manual testing, which I guess no one of us developer likes, and I didn't say that. <laughs> but anyway, if you didn't start writing tests or didn't take care of it for a long time, like I did sometimes in my apprenticeship or something, it's, it might be a bad idea to just starting out and saying, OK, I just will write some tests. I don't care. It could cause a mess. I know by experience. I have a talk about common, pit, uh, common pitfalls I did. So yeah, I really need. So we should take a quick look what test we should write. There are some metaphors which will guide you to a certain year amount on how many tests I should write with which type. This one is quite classical. It's the test pyramid. It's by Mike Cohn, and it was further developed by, I guess, Fowler. And it shows you some yeah, guidance on how many tests you should write from which. And we will start with the lowest one, because this pyramid shape can indicate you already the amount of tests from a certain testing type. But just to make a quick definition on that one, if you are at the lowest step of the pyramid, the tests are fast and does 
co-sufficient. But if you rise to the top, like basically here, they will grow more and more slower and thus more expensive. But maybe they might be worth the cost, right? Yeah, the most interesting testing type when it comes to this one, I just briefly covered, is called unit test because they will test the smallest unit possible. And that might be a function, that might be a class, an interface, a component. Yeah, we can, we can discuss about that later on. I don't want to cover too much of the time because components could be considered an integration test as well, which is slightly slower, depends on the way you write your integration test because it will take some units and will test in a combination with each other. Basically, like, how are they working together? And then, when it comes to the top of the pyramid, the end-to-end -end test pyramid, top, um, they are quite slow. But as indicated, they might be worth the cost because as farther as you progress to the top of the pyramid, the nearer you will come to the user. So you can be even more confident that your code or your functionality will work as intended. So, but wait, I'm talking about end-to-end, end-to-end, end-to-end end -to -end testing. What do I mean with that one, right? Well, I like to use the term workflow-based testing to basically explain end-to-end -end tests to my fellow colleagues or apprentices, which I want to taught, test, uh, teach testing. Workflow-based means you take a workflow, you take a test case, and you test it from beginning to the end, the full stack, the full experience, like a user would do it. When it comes to QA or quality assurance theory, this is called system test. And that's basically what we want to do. And that means we want to teach the computer to behave like a person, like a real person, like clicking and interacting and waiting and doing basically everything we as a human would do. So they are really meaningful because of that fact, because how closer can you get to a user if you basically simulating one, right? But well, I can feel you. If you got some experience in end-to-end -end testing and some fellow yeah, teachers say they can be really difficult or even frightening because they have some certain drawbacks. I would even consider them pain points. The first one, we already covered it. They are slow. The computer clicks things, so it's the nature of things that those tests have a slow execution time. And people are impatient. I am impatient. I'm, I'm to blame as well. And so those waiting, especially if you want to have your pull request merged, this can really quickly frustrate people quicker than the execution time. Well, but that's not all. A oh, thing where I need to admit is bothering me as well as poor maintainability. In the worst case, you have only logs to see what happens if your test failed. You have no means to debug. And in the worse or even the worst case, your test, which is failing in CI, will be totally fine when it comes to your local machine. Much fun, right? But that's not the worst thing. My, basically, let's call it end boss and my nightmare. I'm, I'm really honest with you. I have a complete talk about this topic. It's called flakiness, flaky tests. So it's basically a test which lies to you. It fa passes, it fails, it passes, it fails, and nothing changes in between. It's such a, such a, such an essence, right? Well, it's like a Heisen bug, which is a bug which only occurs if you look away. So a Heisen fail will only occur if you don't debug, if you don't observe it, make it even more tedious to debug. So why should we consider into end testing? Should we be worried if we try it out? Don't worry, really don't worry. I found a way to make it better, at least, or even avoid or found a way to cure those pain points. So like, let me share with you how end-to-end -end testing is not that painful as this might indicate to you. How to make the most of the execution time so they will not be so expensive as you might think. And to basically get confident when it comes to your releases. So, well, I said we want to do some live coding. What 
should we test in NEOS? What could be a good idea? Well, in general, when it comes to deciding on which workflow is precious enough to be tested or not, I need to use everyone's favorite answer, it depends. It depends on your project. It depends on NEOS in this moment being a CMS system. Well, but I can give you some advice when it comes to my daily doing. The first criteria I'm using to decide if I should write an end-to-end -end test or not is, is my workflow common enough? Is it something the user will experience a lot? Is it something like a happy pass or some CRUD operation, which is essential for my application? Then I should probably write an end-to-end -end test. Same with this one. How vulnerable is my workflow? How much damage would be done if I screw it up? When it comes to e-commerce, it's clearly like the registration or checkup process where customer would lose money if it breaks. And last but not least, if my end-to-end -end test would cause some duplicate code, or if a unit or integration test is better suited for it, I should probably waive it. All right, so what does that mean for a content management system? What could be a good workflow which a user should be able to do all the time and which would cause much, much, a lot of damage when it's broken? Well, I guess it's this one. As a user, I want to be able to create a page. So yeah, I guess we have a little test case we can write together, right? All right, so let's do exactly that. In order to write my test, I want to use Cypress because it saved my back lots of time when it comes to maintainability and flakiness. In general, it's an all-in-one testing framework which is using Node.js to be built and enables you to write your test in JavaScript according to much as in text. So if you have some experience with Jest or other frameworks, you might find yourself familiar with it. Cypress uses some um, own UI for running the tests. So it gives you some really neat features when it comes to debugging, to time travel. I will cover it in a bit. And yeah, basically help you with lots of things to debug, especially as it runs inside of the browser, not just outside remote controlling it like Selenium does a couple of times. And in this way, you can find yourself with your familiar tools like the Chrome or whatever browser you use, DevTools, which helps even more when it comes to debugging. Well, well enough theory. Let's apply the reality filter to it. I talked about a hands-on experience. So I guess, yeah, we can try to start with live coding now. So give me a little minute to get ready when it comes to this one. So, I will be quite soon because I guess you want to see my wonderful slides. I don't know if they're wonderful, but we figure that out. All righty. So, okay. Okay, I think we are ready. I'm just checking if. It looks fine when it comes to this one. But I, I think we will not start with my mock project before. I will start from scratch. So let's create a little folder. Let's call it example without cats, unfortunately, because I forgot to inside, uh, insert cats in my talk. Example without cats. Cats, there we are. CD example. Without cats. Yeah, I'm not that creative sometimes when it comes to naming because I don't like to discuss names. But if you like that, we can do that. So when it comes to installing Cypress, I will use the npm command for that. But you are limited to that. So if you're not a fan of npm, you can use yarn as well. And if you like neither of those, you can use their zip file from their site. So you are quite free when it comes to that. And it's already done. So let me open this UI, this test runner, so to say. 
You can, of course, write some NPM scripts, aliases, or use the direct binary path if you like to. And then we need to wait a little bit. If you know Family Guy, please imagine this wonderful little Star Wars elevator music, because I don't know if I can play it because of copyright reasons. But I, I almost always imagine it if I'm waiting for things. All right, there we are. I'm sorry that I'm looking on the thing. I hope it's big enough. There we are. This is the test runner. Cypress includes some neat little examples to show their features, but we want to write our own one, so let's close them for now. And just take in mind this little integration test area here, because this is where the magic will happen in a second. But as you, as I fortunately spoil it a little bit, I actually prepared a little repository, which you can have later on in GitHub, uh, GitHub as well, if you want to. And then we will get started again. So there we are. We open the test runner. We wait for a little second. But as long as we wait, let me give you a quick introdu introduction to the folder structure to give you a first overview if the test runner is leaving me there. So, go away, you are not yet there. It's not your turn yet. So, the Cypress folder here in the root folder is the, yeah, basically, almighty folder containing basically almost everything. We have this Cypress JSON file where I have some configuration, like environment variables, timeouts, the base URL, which will be important in a bit. I won't open it for now because it contains some uh, password even if it's just for the demo environment, just so you know you can hide your password later on inside of your log so nobody sees it quite so quick. All right, if we open the own magic Cypress folder, we have five others. The download one is the one if you want to test the download, so the result of your download will be stored there. The fixture folder here is containing text uh, test fixtures, like data you want to use, which is fixed, which won't change at all. Please, please take care that it's not changing, like IDs which are get generated in a build. I did this mistake. It was not that pleasant. Yeah, the plugin folder is quite self-explanatory self because it contains plugins, so you can um, extend Cypress functionality with lots of plugins if you miss something. And the support one is some kind of extension as well. So it gives you the opportunity to use helpers or page objects or own commands if you have some steps inside of your test, which happens again and again, and you don't want to duplicate them, you can use them here and store them here. But last but not least, I didn't forget the integration folder, which will contain all of our tests. So I guess we should use it, right? Let's open it and create a new file. And I want to call our test create new page. Damn am I creative, but it's the thing we want to do. I'm using the spec suffix, which is um, short for specification, which is a common pattern when it comes to much tests. So let's keep it like that. You can use JavaScript. So I will use normal JavaScript, default JavaScript, for the sake of simplicity. But if you want to, you have TypeScript support as well. All right, so, yeah, we want to get it. And then we can start. The first thing we do if we write a test together is giving it a frame, a structure, something which we can use for that one, but also important when it comes to lifecycle hooks. This is by the describe method. So how do we call our test frame? Um, page creation. Something like that. Yeah, I removed the typo because I don't like typos. There we go. And then we, con we continue. All right, so this is the test frame for the structure. The actual test will be defined by an it function. It should create a new page because it should do that. This is the actual test. So, uh, the further we do, what could be the first thing we need to do to test a website? Could it be navigating to it? 
Exactly. So we're using our first command ever. It's called Cypress Wizard. A command is basically everything which Cypress can do to interact with your page. May it be visiting something, clicking something, all those kind of things. And as I defined the base URL beforehand in this um, little Cypress JSON here, um, I can just use the root folder and we're good to go. Well, let's quickly check our new little test. Where is my mouse? There we are. Having a black mouse is a good idea for a black template. So let's hide the examples and take a look. And we opened our demo instance. Wonderful. Congratulations. We wrote a first test. OK, bye. Don't worry. I won't do that. So we will fill it with life now. So what should we do when it comes to creating a page? I guess we need to log in first. So we need to enter a username. It may be this one, and the password, and tip login. And now we need to teach Cypress exactly that. And in order to do that, Cypress needs to know with which element it wants to interact. So we need to find out selectors for unique selectors for the elements. All right, Cypress gives you a little help for that. It's this little selector playground here. I hope it's OK to read it. Otherwise, I will quickly zoom in, even though the yeah, resolution is not that great, I guess. That you do, right? All right. So we can hover about all those elements and see in the tooltip, or even later on in this input field, which selector we could use. You see, this one is an ID. I like to use IDs because you can assume that they are unique, hopefully. Well, you see it on this little count here that it's unique, and we can use it. So, all right. Let's quickly take a look and write our first interaction. I want to type in this one, Cypress get username. Get is the one command you will see in lots of lots of occasions when it comes to Cypress, because it returns the element to work on, given this selector to it. So Cypress get me the username input field, and then type my username. I guess it was cypress.env, because I was using environment variables, so I don't need the quotes. cypress.env user. Hopefully, I have it by heart. If not, we will see it later on. And we need to do the same for the password. Pass. So let's quickly check which selector we have to use. Hey, where it is? Did I? Did I? No, I didn't. Perfect. So. There's, OK, I could have guessed. But that's really, really fine, because it's easy. You can see at first sight which, what the input field wants to do. And it's unique, so I like it. All right, next one. We want to finally log in. So I want to see this login button. And OK, I see a little pseudo selector. To be honest, I'm not a great fan to use it, because it indicates that you need a certain order. In this case, because there's just one button, that's OK. But imagine working with a list, and the order of the entry is changed. That might be flaky, right? So let's take a look if we find another better selector. As we are in the browser here, you can use all the things you are used to use. So you can basically use your common dev tools if you want to which is kind of fine. So let us check if we find a better one. Uh, I don't know. But let's, let's go with the Neos button for now, because we can do another workaround to not be dependent on orders. So Cypress contains. This is a special nice little command, which gives you yeah, an assertion, basically, if this uh, text is somewhere on the side, but if you use the selector as a parameter first, it will, contain, uh, it will give you the element with the, uh, with the string. So let's enter it, right? Cypress contains and give me the element with the string uh, login inside of it, and then click it. 
All right. So, a little saving, and let's check what I did here. Hey, open. Oh, that doesn't look good, right? Hmm. So you see how it looks like as it's failing. Cypress will help you figuring out why it's failing. And I guess some people already saw why it was failing, but please be quiet for a little moment so the others can see a nice little thing when it comes to Cypress. Because if you take a look here and pin some log entries, you can basically have any kind of information. And in this case, it's quite cool to take a look and inspect everything, but you can do it with other points as well, like which, um, which element were found and yeah, lots of things. But well, here it's only the um, string. It was not found, which is sadly quite obvious because I didn't consider the capital letter. So let's quickly check it and change it. Let's save. The uh, test is already executed. And I guess that looks fine. OK, so the next thing we want to do is actually creating the page. So we need this button here. I will check if I can use the selector here. Yeah, it's an ID. It doesn't contain anything which could be generated in you. So I like it. I'll use it. And go back again. I will say Cypress get the element with this ID and click it again. Let's see what happened. It's already good. And yeah, the model window is opened. And look at that. This is the time travel, which helps me a lot when it comes to debugging, because you can take a look at any snapshot here, what happened inside of your test. Even when it comes to the clicking, you can see where it was clicking. And basically, any little thing what happens inside of your page. So if you want to see why a test was failing or maybe debugging a bug fix, this could help you a lot. And as you see here, that's even the case when it comes to requests. So when the request is fired and when the response is there. This is quite cool. And if we are already on it, I can show you some other thing. If you pinned it, you can basically inspect any information of the request. That's kind of neat, right? All right, back to topic. We want to con uh, continue. We want to create a page. So I want um, Nia's this one. Again, that's a quite big selector. So I'm not sure if I want to use it. Let's take this last selector and use contain again. Did you see this one? I don't know if I like it. First point, it's a CSS selector, which might be prone to change. So imagine you are a developer refactoring the classes and renaming a class. Your test will fail without an actual error, which is the whole problem. So but please, just leave it like that. And when it comes to this maybe idea, I don't know, if it's generated and you, you shouldn't use the selector as well. But for the simplicity of things, we will use it for now. All right, so get it. Ah, I, I wanted to use contains because I want to use the string. It was like using a page. Yeah, Seite is the um, German word for page. So let's take it and click it. Yeah, and let's take a look how our test progresses. It's logging in. It waits for the page to load. It waits more to load. And then we are at the uh, password change site. OK, site was not the best way to use. So let's get back and see if we have a better, a better possibility to fight this one. I'll use the dev tools for that. Let's take a look. I know it's really small now. I'm not sure if it's a good idea. Nah. Let's go 
do it for now and try to use this one. Okay, I will use that for the time being because it's unique. Okay, and then I want to um, enter something like that. Maybe like created by all of us is a good idea. Let's quickly correct this one to use the selector, which is quite long. Please bear with me. <laughs> and rewind that to get. And I go back to the, um, the form. I'm using this ID, again an ID, that's, that, that's quite neat. I want to type in created by all of us because we are creating a test together. Get this one and right, use the right one, not a typo again. All right, thank you. And then type created by all of us. All right. And last but not least, we really want to create the site, so we need to click Create New. Again, that's a neat little ID. It's unique. I, wanted to, I want to use it. So let's get back to here. And Cypress get this element and click. All righty then. Let's see if I was successful. And get back to the test runner. It's already logging in because it's auto loading basically. And he doesn't like this. And ah, I see why. Because I have a point too much. All right, next try. Again, we're logging in. We're waiting for it. And yay! Our test passes. We were able to create a complete page with Cypress. But, well, to be honest, if you give me a test like that inside of a pull request, I most likely won't approve it. Because, of course, you covered the workflow, white, right? But you don't know if it's really working. Did we really create the site even though we see it? Inside of the log, we will not see it here. And, well, could it be dangerous? Because what happens if your app is under load? Are you sure that this is enough to wait? We don't, won't cause flakiness, right? So let's take a better look at the waiting times. A nice little detail is, in general, that this get commands and most other Cypress command will have an automatic waiting functionality. So they will retry the command for a certain time. You can configure it and then fail. So they will take care if an element exists inside of your DOM, but not more than that. So if it's not interactable, if it's not visible, Cypress won't take care. And this is a point where flakiness could occur. So how do I proceed then? All right. I think we should at least wait for the pages or the elements to load before we interact it. So let's take a look when we load some page. So for example, here. So I want, want to make sure that this is um, fully rendered and loaded and there before I continue. So let's quickly, should we use this one? Yeah, I use the login box. So I want to make sure that the login box exists before I continue. So I'm using assertions, which are basically checks to make sure that our requirements are met inside of a test. I'm using them to wait expli explicitly. So I want to be sure that the login box is visible. So I'm using should and the trainer be visible. OK, on which points should we do the same? I guess it's a good idea to make it if we are logged in. So basically, after the page is loaded. So here, Cypress is quite obvious when a page is loaded. So here, on this point. Um, I guess we can be quite simple on that point, especially when it comes to the time, and use the button we want to use. Hey, get back. Thank you. So uh, I'm using this one. 
It should be visible before we click it. Uh, where do we do it? On this point. Cypress get my element. And again, it should be visible. Okie dokie. The same is for the two model windows. So I guess to get it a bit quick, I want to do the same with the field here. Should again be visible. Yeah, you might have guessed this is an assertion you will see a lot inside of my tests. All right, and last but not least, I want to make sure that we really created a page together. So let's check if the last one here, okay, go away, was created by all of us. So again, I will fetch this selector, even though it has maybe an idea on it, I don't know. And make sure it's visible, but that's not the only thing we can do. We can even wait, we can even use a bit more um, things to wait for a really um, safe time. I know there will be some discussions about it if this is the scope of an end-to-end -end test. I think it's quite neat, but I'd love to hear your opinion on that one later on. So, we can wait for API responses. So basically doing API testing inside of an ETE test. And I'm using it at Shopware quite a lot because we are um, API first, so even a click would use the API, so I think that's no problem to mix those tests a bit. In order to do that, I think it might be a good idea to test the uh, page creation. And I will use the Cypress intercept command to define the route I want to rate for. So. Let's do it. I guess it was a post request. Post. And then we need the URL to wait for. Um, let me quickly check which one it was. So, uh, I guess. I'm not sure if it's really the one because I'm not that much into Neos yet. But I, I think we can go with this one, just to prove my point. All right. I'll copy it. I will use it here. And then I will assign a little alias so Cypress can use it later on and find it later on. Of course, typing correctly has some advantages. Go back here. And then I will do my assertion here. So, Cypress, wait. Please never do this one. Please never do this one. I cannot stress that enough. No fixed rating times, please, because if your app needs more time than that, it will fail in a flaky manner. Experience it myself. And if your application is more fast, faster than that one, your test will be slower than it needs to. So please forget that really, really soon and return to the request. If you do this, it will wait for the response but it can still fail because it won't check if it's successful or not. So let's add a kind small thing. So I want to check if the response has a status code. And it should be successful. So, oh, that's not the right place. There it is. Should equal, because I want to have a certain um, status code, and it will be the 200. All right, let's see if I was right and if it's passing. I really love it if we have some API requests to wait for, because it's quite efficient to determine if all data is on the, uh, on the point where I want to have it. OK, it's covered by another element. so. Maybe this session we used wasn't the best one. I quickly check again. Because it's covered by another thing. Yeah, because we had a little problem. Because as the computer is behaving like a real user, we need to scroll like a real user, right? And of course, it's no good idea that it's always the same name here. So yeah. Let's keep that away for now. We can use a little command like Cypress scroll. 
and I saw that we didn't determine if it's the right one to get checked. So let's take this selector again. And scroll into view because we want to scroll it. Scroll into view. Perfect. And let's use another name because we were creating a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And I want to correct this and use our new name because I want to make sure that it's really the page we created and nothing other. So like this one. And we run it again. So it's again logging in and it is creating our wonderful page and still yeah this is a little bit flakiness we should take into account all right here i'm using another name to make it quick mm, let's call it one created by us and run it again so that's basically the way you can use Cypress to write a test. All right here. So maybe my uh, assertion is just no good idea here. But you get the point. We know that it was um, created perfectly because we saw it and we have the change thingy here and because of the time I think I should still continue but if you want to take a look later on with me together that's still a good idea and let's remove those for now and use it like this to not waste too much time to search for the right selector so maybe ideas and selectors aren't that a good idea I don't know, and scroll down. Yeah, perfect. So finally, I can con uh, congratulate you. We wrote our first test together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, and thanks a lot for your support to pray to the live demo god. So it's not too much of a catastrophe. <laughs> Yeah, if you see it like that, you don't have such a steep learning curve. It's quite shallow because if you use JavaScript before or TypeScript, if you prefer TypeScript, or maybe even use some other test frameworks like Mojo in general, Jest, you'll find yourself familiar when it comes to the yeah, writing of Cypress tests. So it's not that much more to learn or to get yourself familiar to. And even if that's the case, Cypress has a wonderful documentation at their disposal. And not only because they have that, but also because they are open source. So many people are contributing to Cypress. May it be via contribution or even plugins. So if you need some more commands like, I don't know, a drag and drop command, which might be really important for Neos, or even a full-blown visual testing integration, they got you covered. And speaking about open source, the test runner is free of charge, so you can try it out. Speaking of open source, you can find this example in a more researched way, <laughs> let's just say, on uh, GitHub. So if you want, take a look, check it out, destroy it, give me feedback, and I, will, I think I will add my slides and other resources if you want to know anything else inside of this readme of this repository as well. So please take a look. And if you have any feedbacks or any questions, feel free to reach out to me at any time. May it be Twitter, LinkedIn, here at the conference, or even next month where I will be at a, I think it's a streaming session with some guys at the Super Duper Developer Club, which is a quite cringy name, but they are quite cool people. And if you got any questions later on, make sure to join in. Well, what's left to say then? Thank you. Thank you for your time, your patience, and your support. And I hope I can do some little toast with you on my birthday or 
whatever. See you later. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ramona. Thank you. A very interesting topic. And um, I would still give a little bit of time to ask some questions that the sure, came through gladly, the app. Gladly, yeah. yeah. And um, uh, we, I know we are a bit late. And, uh, but yeah, anyway, I, that's not your fault. It's just the last talk. And um, that's why we wanted to give you the time for the questions. Yeah, thank you. And um, yeah. So let's start with um, the first question. Can I write a gherkin cucumber test for Cyprus? Yeah, exactly. You can do that. I know that some people love gherkin, some are a bit of another opinion, but there's a Cyprus plugin for that. And I've used it myself as well. It was yeah, like I was used to when it comes to gherkin. So yeah, if you want, check it out. I can search it for you. Maybe we can talk later. And I, or you can Google it. So I guess it's not that, easy to, uh, not that difficult to find. And uh, one last question. Sure. We had a test cafe uh, talk in 2019. Yeah. I remember. So the question is: uh, In the Neos UI, we are using test cafe instead of Cypress. Has Cypress also the possibility to use React selectors? That means you can use React components of the UI. UI as selector? Oh, that's a good question because I'm not that familiar when it comes to Test Cafe and React because I'm a Vue.js developer. But I know that there's a quite big testing library as a Cypress plugin, so maybe it's a good idea to check it out. I, can, I cannot promise you that it will cover it, but it's a, in every case, it's a really good addition and maybe check it out. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. We, Still have a little birthday present for you. Yeah, both the presents. <laughs> and you <laughs> told us that you like gin, so okay, this is for you. And uh, um, we have uh, Jan and Klaus playing again, yeah. and I would like to you to stay on the stage for that. And Ooh. this can be. <laughs> You're too kind. <laughs> we'll do some singing together now. Oh God, I should have thought of coming. <laughs> Too kind, you're too kind. <laughs> it's Thank going you. to be a tremendous birthday party for you tonight here. Oh, yeah, I couldn't have great? imagined that it's so great. So, thank you so much, every one of you. <laughs>